So a mechanic uh, buddy of mine asked me to take a look at this. Apparently it's got a little PC board in here, computer board, whatever, PCB, printed circuit board. And yeah, when testing it with the automotive scan tools, like Snap-on for example, then it has some sort of fault. It's complaining about, you know, this thing. Something like relay activation failed or whatever. So anyway, I've been asked to have a look at it. Apparently somebody else has had a look at it before, but yeah, they said there's no PCB in here, which is a little strange because you've got red and black for power, and then you've got some other cables here, at least three cables there, which should be for some signaling. So way would the signal go to? So yeah, anyway, strange people out there. Alrighty, uh, let's just crack it open a bit. The other way, there we go. Hmm, I do notice it's cracked over here. See right about there, which is not so great. Voila! <laughs> you use that as a tray for the bolts, because otherwise you lose them. Um, okay, so I do kind of see that there's no circuit board here, but I mean, these data cables are going somewhere, so something down there is more intelligent. I suppose that's in from the vehicle, and that's out. By the way, this is a rear wheel, I think it's active steering. You know, apparently it's on a Renault Megane, um, what else, a Talisman, and some other, some other various Renault cars. When it doesn't work, you can't steer the car, which means you can't drive the car. So if this thing goes, then you can't drive it. And for some reason, they want something, what about a hundred thousand rand for this thing? They being uh, Renault, the agents in South Africa, which is crazy. Because I see in the UK, it's going for more like 45, well, the equivalent of 45,000, so like half. Okay, so that comes out quite easily. Hmm. I think uh, there's a seal. Let's put that over there. Let's take this back cover off as well. Pick it up straight away and put it with its friends. We have another tray for them. Mm, that's interesting. It's like some greyish, dusty stuff here. Just trying to get to focus on it. See this? Yes, that, that looks interesting. Hmm. But we also have a we have a PCB. So somebody clearly was either lying or was rather stupid when it comes to these things, saying that there's no such thing in here. Anyway, put the nuts there or the bolts, I should say. Uh, three wires here with tabs going that way. It's probably the electric motor on that side, right? Because we can see there's no electric motor on this side, just this piston, which is going to come in and out. Or rod, I don't know if it's a piston. Uh, probably not a piston there. So let's try and just put that one carefully over there. Don't want to mess the O-ring up. So those three, that's to feed the, the motor. I spoke to an electronics buddy of mine and he... Uh, suggested I test the motor, the resistance, I should say, of the windings on the motor, and just compare them to each other. Okay, so about one ohm, let's check this next one, about one ohm again, and compare those two together, let's compare these two together. So about one ohm. We actually check this one already. Just double check it. Point. Oh, okay, one ohm. All right. So they're all three windings in the motor are one ohm. So that's good. Uh, the other thing my electronics buddy said we can try and test is um, check the there's something like a FET, FET on here. So we'll have to take a look at the board and see what we can find. Let's 
that out. Don't do that. Okay, so that's taken it off the motor. As you can see the board here. Maybe yeah, let's bring it up closer. So there's the board. And you can see that's connected. Send power to the motor. Uh, these are like mounting. Checking on the size of, the, of these things. Uh, yeah, they're all the same length, so that's good. And thickness and design. We've got it loose on this side. Hmm. Okay. Might have to take the, this off first. The external power cables. A little electric screwdriver is not that powerful, that's why I use the good grip. To get it started. I'll have to go grab the electric the 18 volt, but for this job I think we'll be fine. Okay, so that's loose, that's loose. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab a brush quickly, just to get the dust off. Okay, just like a, a normal paintbrush, just make sure it's clean, and then you can you can get the dust off it. There's some of this grey dust on the um the PCB here. And then Okay. Don't need conductive dust on here, alright? Let's see what else we've got in here. It's pretty clean there. Hmm, this looks like a thermal interface pad. Like a... Yeah, with this piece of metal being a heat sink. It fits right on this, um, this area here to cool the PCB down. Which makes sense because these FETs, which are transistors I believe, according to my electronics friend, uh, on the other side of that, so they must get quite hot switching the, you know, I don't know, switching the current on and off, I suppose, is what would cause them to get hot. So the board looks like it's in a remarkably good nick. This is just a bit of dirt on here, like oil, from what I can see, on these uh, capacitors. So they look good. Um, yeah, my electronics friend also said. Hey, just test on these uh, these two legs versus the middle leg, and just see if the voltage is well, consistent across all of them, and that using the diode functionality. So test it with a say a red lead, black lead, and then swap it to black lead, red lead. It should work one way, not the other way. So we'll do that now. It's time to test the fits. My electronics buddy suggested it, but in the diode mode, and then try. One point nine before it goes overload. I guess the uh, meter can't handle too much. Or oh. the other way, nothing. Yeah. So that works that way. Check the next one. Yeah. So one point nine before it goes to overload. Okay, so they're all tested out the same. Yeah, 481, 0.481 I should say. 0.482, okay, I'm going to call that the same. 0.481. And then you turn it around, do the other ones. And 0.485. Four eight six or point four eight four. Okay, so they're all the same, and they all seem to behave. There's one little one here, which I actually ended up having to have my electronics buddy give me some hand. He said to apply power to it, twelve volts, and then it started testing normally. So there are a bunch of other things on this board which could be wrong. For example, these well, like logic circuits or integrated circuits. 
which I can't test, and even if I could test, um, if they were broken, there's no ways to replace them because we can't get hold of these parts. Some unusual looking numbers on these things. There we go. A light on it, and that one. So, alrighty. So maybe it's just the dust, in which case there's a chance it'll work. So, reassemble. I'll do the quickly try and get in here. Not doing so good, I'm dropping the screws here each time. Ah, got that one. I'm just starting them off by hand to make sure they're not cross threaded. Now we can, uh... yes, the little screwdriver can only do so much. The dirty side belongs at the bottom here, yeah. judging by the dirt there. And put the dirty bolts together, make it look nice and matching up. <laughs> Oops. Not doing this tight at all, just putting them on loosely for now. My electronics buddy pointed out that we can't really test this thing without plugging it into a vehicle, so that's why we've done a quick clean and a towel check and a reading on everything, because everything seems to be fine, or well, at least everything that can be repaired. So uh, maybe crank it down a bit more. Maybe what you can't do with a screwdriver, but you can do it with a tiny little, little socket wrench. That's pretty tight. Now, if you very gently, gingerly, you can try and replace this one without breaking off that little tab over there. Okay, let's get you to that side. Very good. That's good. Get this on first, I think. Hmm. Can I see this recess there? There is actually a place for this little O ring to go. I just want to understand how this thing got broken there. Hmm. We can help pull it along here. Mm. Yes. Okay, that one has to go that way. Put that one in the way. Make sure we don't forget any of these. Look what I've got. I happen to have this magic stuff. It's specifically meant for uh, rubber seal rings. You know, apply evenly a rubber seal and pipe, blah blah blah. So, give it a go because, well, there's not much else I can do. Okay, so you can see I just put a blob on my finger. I have to undo this one now. I'll have to get it out. Let's hope that a bit of lubrication helps. Boy, boy, did that help. So when in doubt, if it won't fit, use lube. Cool. Right, so that's in, that's in, that's in. Let's get that outside the place to come. Very gently to try and avoid breaking it.
What I like about doing this is like you can really feel your fingers, how much force you're having to put on. So if you put it wrong, you kind of know about it. <laughs> Struggling with that one. Ah, this thread's already looked a bit launched, so. The tap and die set would be useful right about now. Okay, there. It's not cross threading now. See, I can turn it with the fingertips. We don't over tighten that, but well, cool. Um, that's almost it. Just cleaning as we're going here. And the O ring seal type thing in there. Voila. Apparently, the uh, active steering on the rear wheels. Or these Renault cars makes them quite uh, nimble. I mean, I don't can't really see any other reason why you do it. <laughs> it's add extra complexity and weight to a car, right? Make it less reliable. There better be some payback in terms of handling. Um, yeah, so we'll plug this. We'll give back to the mechanic, and if he refits it and the ECU is still unhappy to talk to it, then the recommendation is just to check that well, whatever this plugs into is actually getting power from the relay these two ones, and I suppose getting signal there as well. And then if that doesn't reveal any problems, then hopefully this will work. And if it doesn't, then yeah, I'll import a second-hand one from, uh, from Europe in some way. We're apparently they're more common, probably because there's more Renaults in Europe. Also, well, I suppose that answers the question of what is inside an active rear wheel steer steering motor assembly Turns out there's a bit of brains in there too. Fixed up this cracked part here, cleaned it out on the inside, tested it. That's all we can do. If you find it interesting, cheers.